In today's video, we're at the Nick Bear Seminar and we're going to talk squats with Silent Mike. I've been down, I know. I've been down, been up, been there, been scared before. I, 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 I've been down, I know. I... What's going on, guys? The calm before the storm. It is 9 a.m. here in Austin, Texas, and I am uh, getting some client work done. Everyone in the house went to breakfast, and um, as much as I wanted to go, I really don't want to be behind on um, client work all day because we've got a seminar from noon to four and then we're going on like some kind of a, a, a cruise with all the guys from like six to nine so it's going to be a pretty fast and hectic day so I'm just trying to get ahead of, ahead of schedule so working now and but it's going to be it's going to get more interesting real soon so we'll, we'll get lots of footage from from today and um, hopefully put out some good information for you guys in the next uh, in the next video because today's topic it's a powerlifting seminar, so we're going to put out some information. We'll try to uh, organize that in a manner that can be uh, palatable by you guys. So yeah, Saturday, and uh, just just working. Is anybody starting to show up yet? Yeah, there. All right, guys. So we're here at the uh, event. As you can see, there's a lot of people here, so this is going to be really fun. So I'm going to give a short presentation just about the basics of nutrition for powerlifting, um, kind of cover some broad topics and then after we get everyone done explaining some of the nutrition, everyone's going to go through the lifts and then maybe we'll get a little more specific with the uh, individual questions and answers. So, let's see what uh, everyone has to say. The first speaker is going to be Paul. Why should you listen to me? You should. Everything I say you should question, you can question me later, but I've worked with some of the most elite powerlifters in the world, including a 13-time world champion, right? So I have a little bit of background, I've worked with some great people, so I'm just going to give you my quick tips before we talk to the real talent here, okay? So the first thing is, everyone wants to do a powerlifting meet, you start to look at the weight classes. The first rule, don't look at the weight classes. Your first meet, train hard and come in at the body weight that best represents your ability to train, okay? Powerlifting training is very difficult. If you start compounding that with trying to lose 20 pounds before your first meet because you're worried about getting in a weight class that might make your total look a little more impressive, stop. Unless you're competing at the national or world level, which if you're doing your first meet, you'd be very surprised, right? So the only thing you wanna do for your first meet is hit a nice total, go nine for nine, be healthy in training, be able to recover well. I'm a big believer in flexible dieting. The power of flexible dieting for powerlifting nutrition is very important, okay? Because we want to make sure we're focusing on getting our protein throughout the day, basing our carbohydrates, but I don't want to create eating disorders. Does anyone here ever try to cut water or sodium leading up to a meat? Okay, good. Don't do that, okay? USAPL has a two hour weigh in. You're not going to be able to recover your weight in time in a quick enough manner for a USAPL meat. Some of the other organizations do 24 hours and I will help people with sodium loading and a little bit of carb loading after they weigh in to make weight. What I think is important for athletes and guys doing powerlifting and your normal gym guys is power development and speed. So it's about transferring power from his legs all the way up through the hands. So we gotta be discussing the squat um, and I'm just gonna keep it real basic. For hand placement, you essentially wanna be able to keep your hands as close to you as possible. I would say just kind of start off about shoulder width. So here, wait for the load to settle. And then from here, I'm either gonna take a two-step or three-step walkout. I personally prefer a three-step walkout. It's a lot more just easier. And for beginners, I typically recommend a three-step walkout just because the first step is always gonna be back, and that is gonna allow you to clear the rack. So the first step is gonna be here. A lot of the times with two-step walkout, what happens is you step this way and you hit the rack. So the first step is always going to be back. You're clearing the rack, side, and then the last step is just shift to the side and then you're just adjusting from here. 15, bench 225, is that good? <laughs> okay. If you bench 225 for the next decade, that sucks. If you bench 235 six months from now, that's good, man. That's progress. I'm going to take a breath. 
Say exact words. Kind of breathe. Flex. Try to get your body in a straight line. Think about uh, kind of squishing a can. We want that can to just be there. We don't want to bend the can. We don't want to stop the can. We don't want to twist the can. We just want that can to be there. It's really hard. You got a soda somewhere? Let me still have monster, my man. It's really hard to kind of break a can like this, right? Because it's a straight line. It's compact. We're trying to breathe like that. If I, I'm not going to do it. There's soda in here. Squish this. I can snap this thing super easy. Dude, analogies. You're welcome. seminar free powerlifting seminar good news is it was awesome bad news is you fucking missed it so sorry yeah where are you sorry about your luck <laughs> it was free um but anyway it's been an awesome event and one of the most exciting parts for me about coming was finding out that silent michael's gonna be here because uh we met a while back when i did my uh well actually we met at the arnold three years I, ago I, yeah and i came out to super training got to yeah. hang out and um just one of my favorite people in general same man same and so today you gave a really cool seminar and the topic was deadlift. Yeah. And I'm sure Clad, uh, Chad got some clips of that. But what really impressed me was the delivery of your message. And since I just did a, a video on deadlift, I thought it would be really cool if we go over your three best tips for squat. And for those that aren't familiar with, with Mike, shame on you. Go follow him and all this stuff. But he's, he's just an excellent all-around purveyor of information. He's generally interested in the strength side of the sport. But he's also adopted like nutrition strategies. He works with athletes. He's putting out great content. So he's just someone that I, I'm a big fan of as well, lucky enough to be his friend. So let's talk today yeah. about your three kind of go-to things, because I know you work with a lot of people from beginning to advanced yeah. on the squat. Yeah. And I feel like the squat is probably one of the, if not the most technically demanding lifts of the power lift. 100%. That would probably be tip number one if we had to get into it, is start okay. to treat the squat like a skill. Okay. Um, now there's a million different strategies to train, yep. a million different programming, a million different uh, squat styles, but whatever it is, if you start to treat it like a skill in your head, uh, yes. you're gonna progress. So um, Kobe Bryant, big basketball fan, I think yep. he liked basketball yeah. a little bit. He didn't shoot 100 free throws on Monday and never did it again. Right. He didn't go out there and just shoot half court shots and then expect to make a free throw or, or a mid-range jump. Yes. Uh, he's constantly perfecting his craft uh, daily Obviously yeah. now we're squatting, there's load involved, so yeah. not always the best answer, but he's working on his form. I don't know how much of you guys watching play basketball, but right. basketball is similar to other sports where if I'm going to get uh, jump shots in practice, yeah. I'm going to start with the layup and just form shoot. Yeah. I'm going to make 10, just take a step back, I'm going to make about 10, right. I'm going to take a step back. So you're kind of repeating the patterns. Over and over, yeah. slow to fast. Yeah. Once I'm warm and I feel good, then I'll add my dribble in jump shot, dribble and jump shot. And squatting is gonna be similar where not only obviously do you need to warm up the barbell, yes. uh, going to the basics, but you need to practice that skill over and over and over again. Yeah. That's gonna be really hard to do when you're going too heavy, which leads us into so number let me two, ask you this. hit me. <laughs> Just real quickly, yeah. because I like looking back, like I'm thinking back when I was a teenager, when it was day for me to squat, you know what I thought? Yeah. Quads. Oh, uh, right. Which is 
terrible thing to think when you think squatting. Because right. Because it's not a quad only movement. I think that's. Uh, I like that. I like that cue for you guys. Uh, you're a little old school too, and some guys are where it's like, oh, leg day, bro. Yes. Like, but even as a bodybuilder, which I'm not, but I've watched a lot of guys like you and right, Lane right, right. and others, and I've learned. Uh, if you progress in these main lifts, yeah. you'll build the physique you want. Absolutely. So if you start thinking squat day, and how many times yes. a week do I have to squat to progress, rather than like leg day, oh no, I can't walk. Like those memes really piss me off. Yeah. Because uh, that's actually, in my opinion, just dumb. I can well, write any workout. And as someone who's studying exercise science now, I'm learning that muscle damage mm, might uh, not be the dumb, not the best thing you can do. It's to a progress. piece, maybe. It's right. a piece, maybe. Uh, and same thing, like. Uh, yeah, obviously frequency is going to play a, a, a role in, in protein yeah. synthesis and other things uh, to help, help us get stronger and grow muscle. But if you, I can write any workout and annihilate you. Right. Hey, uh, Paul, we're going to do a thousand squats and a thousand burpees. Right. Oh, dang, Mike, I'm real tired. Great workout. But like you that. wouldn't treat a skill like that, which is what you said. And you progress. Treat it like a skill. Yeah, you treat it like yeah. a skill and hopefully you get into whatever it is in your life to you get better You wouldn't practice shooting a basketball to the point where you couldn't shoot again for six days. Yeah, yeah. You get exactly. rhabdo on your triceps. Exactly. Like, that's not going to help us. Uh, and then number two, which kind of goes into that, is um, going too heavy too often. I yeah. think squat is probably the least culprit of the list with that uh, okay. because it is scary, right? The gym right. bro, he's not gonna load up five plates because it is scary, like it'll kill you. Yeah. Uh, deadlift, bench, guys tend to do it a little bit more. Sure. Um, but I still think people are a little bit too close to their uh, 90% one rep max, 100% okay. one rep max in the squat. The heavier the load, uh, the more likely there's gonna be form breakdown. Yes. The more often you perform form breakdown, the more often you build bad habits, right? Yeah. We are what we repeatedly do. Right. So personally, obviously this is more my philosophy, not for everybody, but submaximal training, you're handling 60, 65, 75% for the yeah. majority of your training. Yes. Um, one, you can accumulate volume. Absolutely. Build muscle, build strength. Two, you'll be able to train more frequently. Yeah. If you hit you know, three sets of three at 90% all the freaking time, you get beat up quick. Yeah. And then three, you're gonna build up good habits. Yeah. Uh, same ideas, shooting a layup before I'm shooting half court shots. Yeah. If you only shoot a half court shot, you won't be able to make a layup. Right. But if you shoot a layup or a, a free throw, you may be able to make a half court shot. Absolutely. Uh, and I guess three. I'm a big fan of the first two, so I'm excited for number three. Uh, three's not planned, so we got to think of a, uh, another one. Because there's a lot of little things, but uh, I guess technique first, treat it like a skill, figure out some kind of programming uh, where you're not yeah. going too heavy too often. Yeah. Um, and then three. Get some eyes on you, maybe. You know, whether I'm a big ah, proponent of hiring a coach. Yeah. Uh, obviously, not everyone's financially available to hire a coach. Right. Um, find a friend. Um, yeah. Record yourself. Yeah. Um, YouTube is awesome. I will say this: even if you can't hire a coach, a lot of coaches are nice people. And if you say, yeah. "Hey, can you look at my squat and just say, yeah. what do you think?" I wish I got a penny for every uh, person's form I've analyzed and helped on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. So you know, have as, at least so email Silent pennies. Mike right now with your video, <laughs> bro. And so he's many. gonna fix your squat. So many. But yeah, you're right though. You're right. I'm sure yeah. if uh, someone tagged you on something, you saw it, you'd probably give them at least a tip. Uh, yeah. And I'd like to do the same. Uh, but same thing in a regular gym. You know, if you're yeah. in the gym and see a coach or trainer that seems like they know what they're yes. doing, hey man, do you mind like just looking at my squat for a second? Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm doing this. I'm not sure Maybe if I need to attend a free seminar in Austin. Uh, there's a lot of lot opportunities uh, I was talking yeah. to uh, a bunch of guys in there but I was like you know ten years ago this is impossible no not enough people know about powerlifting not a people right. enough maybe even the experts are uh, ready to uh, share that knowledge right. where I'm maybe not an expert but I'm friends with a lot of experts and I like yeah. to read a lot of experts yeah. so I accumulate some knowledge uh, and then I feel about myself yeah you know really though uh, yeah. I think me and you are kind of in similar shoes where maybe yeah. uh, one we get to surround ourselves with awesome people uh, two, totally. we're hungry for knowledge, so we allow it to uh, come into us. Yeah. Where anybody can watch YouTube and be entertained, but how many people go to YouTube or go to a book or a seminar or what at school, anything, and actually go in thinking to absorb? Uh, and that's just a little switch also, and this is just bullshit rambling now, but yeah. if you want to learn and you're open to learning and you absorb, look, I don't believe in this coach philosophy, but there's something I can pick up here. Yeah. You know, I don't, I, okay, I'm not 300 pounds and bench 700, but there's something I can learn here. Yep. And if you're open to that, uh, you can go a long way. Yeah. Well, that was fantastic. And it's exactly what I wanted. That was unrehearsed. And I think we got some great tips. I wrote a script last night. Yeah. <laughs> Just... So, well, you know, what goes on behind YouTube scenes? I mean, there's a whole... Do people think that? Hey, comment below if you think anything on YouTube scripted. Uh, not anything. Anything in fitness YouTube, I guess. Wait. We don't want to tell them about the whole staff of people we have here. Yeah, and the, the this, this is, is a, a we're actually wall. not even yeah, it's a green screen. We're in Hollywood yeah. behind a green screen. Yeah. No, I actually had someone comment to me once, your cameraman points the video at you too much. You know who my you cameraman want, was? Yeah, you. My arm. I yeah, was holding or a tripod. I was like, <laughs> what do you want to see my feet? Do you think I have a budget for my YouTube channel? Yeah. Haters, come on. 
Anyway, so thank you, Mike. Thank you, buddy. Uh, I will see you soon. On a boat. You're coming to Tampa. Stop this nonsense. Uh, I, I think, I'm not going to quote it, but I think I'm going to try to make my way to Orlando. Uh, okay. And I'll try to make it like a six-day trip we'll so I get some again. Paul time, some Nationals time, and some Disneyland Nationals. time. Or Disney World. That'll be great. I think Orlando. those are the, the trip. Yeah, it'll be fun. October 13th. How's the weather right, in October? Beautiful. All right, it's not, about it's not swampy. 80. You might get some humidity in there, but October is the best month for weather. For it's the not like year. this. It won't no, be this it's hot. way cooler. All right, I'm down. I'm there. Yeah, Sign yeah. me up. All right, guys, that's going to be it for uh, the Silent Mike interview. Now we're going to go eat, which is everyone's favorite thing to do yeah, on it's been YouTube. A long day. And uh, I think we're going to go have a couple alcoholic or adult beverages. Yeah, are you on a little a, bit of a drinker? On a cruise tonight. I want to do some shots of tequila. Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm bringing my own. It's a BYOB. Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to have like a beer. I'm bringing some Cafe Patron. You have to have some. Uh, maybe uh, we'll get you on my channel in a second. We'll talk alcohol and dieting because I'm going to diet. Let's do it. Despacito, quiero respirar tu cuello despacito. Deja que te diga cosas al oído para que te pierdas si no estás conmigo. What's going on guys? So the day for the uh, seminar is kind of over. We went eight, met back up at Nick's house, and now it is time to... I uh, think we're going on that boat. Nick got us a boat for like a two hour river cruise. It's supposed to be really scenic and nice. And I think we're gonna have a little fun. A bunch of bros on a boat. It should be entertaining, so let's, let's go. Sunny day dreams and we up now. Vodka lemonade, I serve it up, it goes down. 75 degrees in a dope sound. All you need to live fine, to live fine. A little sunshine, cause she need it. A dose of rainfall in the evening. The waves crash down and we feel them. Say here's to the nights, we steal them. And I'll be running cause I figured out. The more I slow down, the less I get out. And if we fall, let's be strong now. What it really means to live like golden Yeah, we're golden, baby girl, we're golden